Good morning. Good morning. Getting in a beautiful day. Great day to be here, be back in the house of the Lord. Um, we'll get started this morning. If we would, we'll get Brother Clifford to open us up for Sunday school prayer. Amen. Good morning. God's good to us. He's, uh, he's blessed us with another beautiful day uh, with sunshine to, to be able to wake up to and the birds singing. This morning's lesson is Isaiah 49, 1 through 22. We, um, the title of the lesson is A Light for the Gentiles. We, uh, we're blessed to be able to be that light. As Christians, that's what our duty is, is to to be that light, to shine people away to, to some hope. And we're in a, in a time right now that there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of hope. But we have hope in Jesus Christ that he can save our souls and take us on further than what this old world has to offer. But the golden text is, it is, a light, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. It says Isaiah forty nine six. We um, that's our job. That's our duty, as His people, being saved, being born again, is to is to lead others to Him. Our text this morning is um, it says, "Listen, O isles, unto me." And hearken, ye people from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. There's no life that God doesn't know about. Even here in Isaiah, he knew that God, the creator of everything, knew us from the time we were in our mother's womb. From the time we were created, he's known us. We've had a name. He knows us by name. Every head of our hair is numbered. 
But my God knew me before I was even born into this world, before my mom and dad even gave me a name. He knew me. It says, And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Um, we'll look at that verse and he... Um, He's describing weapons and how much detail went into the weapon that was made, uh, that the smith put into that, hours and hours on every weapon. And that's what he does for us. He, he's sharpening us for his purpose and his plan and making us into that, that weapon for him, not to go out and destroy, but to go out and to win souls. It says, And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O, God, o Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. We, um, he's all the strength that we need. No matter what the battle is, no matter what comes before us, He's our strength. He's created us for whatever battle that we're coming into. He, he will be our, our rock and our shield. And <laughs> that little song at camp that they always sing that, I can't do the little the dance, or I don't remember most of the song, but they said something about, He's our rock and He's our shield and he goes before us and fights the battle. We just have to praise Him. We just have to be there and know that He's our God, that He's going to do everything for us. This little virus doesn't have anything on Him. We just got to be still to be loyal and serve Him and show the world the hope that we have. When the economy is crashing, <laughs> when everybody's sick, but we still have a smile on our face and a joy within our hearts and a new song, that's it within us, we can show that hope. It says, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to Him whom man despiseth, to Him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and He shall choose thee. Um, that Holy One, that, that's our God. That That's... Isaiah here, he, he's telling us of, of Jesus to come, that the Christ is coming, and, and everyone, no matter whose authority they have, no matter how powerful they are, will worship him, will praise him, and he will set things back to right that have been all turned wrong. Um, we can look out in the world today. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff being turned to the wrong, but... He's coming back. For the Christian, we're, we're, we're looking for the second coming. We're looking for that, that time of peace that's going to come. That time that when he comes back and sits on the throne, no lips can go without praising him. No lips can go and deny, deny him because they won't have a choice. By that time, they, all knees will have bowed and confessed that he is Lord. But we have to make that decision before he comes back. We have to make that decision to follow him. Because if you wait till then, it's not been your choice. It's not been you listening to the Holy Spirit. It's been because he has come already. The time is up. But we can make that decision now to follow him, to be his, and to, to live this life of hope that only he can give. It says, Thus saith the Lord, In acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. 
and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, shew yourselves, they shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. I'm not much of a farmer, <laughs> but... And I can't really even grow a garden. I was talking about that yesterday to our friend. He had a big tiller on the back of his tractor. I said, wouldn't that be nice? I said, if I was going to grow a garden, I would want one of those tillers on the back of my tractor. I said, but I just can't justify because, well, it takes a lot of time to grow a garden. And I don't have a whole lot of time to grow a garden. Every time we've tried to grow something, it, it, it turns out, well... I seem to be able to grow crabgrass pretty good. But, you know, it says that pastures in high places, it seems to me like when my yard gets wet, the grass kind of turns brown and if it gets too wet. But on those high places, it just gets enough water to run off and God waters it and keeps it green. But those low-lying pastures seem to stay kind of muddy and trodden by the cows and stuff. And that's what I thought about all pastures. It says, their pastures shall be in all high places. We, um, seems to be going to be green and lush all the time. I know. Is that right, Brother Jack? Does, does the grass grow better on, on, a, on an incline than in, the, in a dip? <laughs> It says, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Sounds like a good shepherd to me. We, uh, we follow the good shepherd. We've been talking about that at home some. The good shepherd knows where to take his flock, where to feed him at. Knows the, the freshwater springs versus the, the stagnant water. He'll steer them away from that stagnant water because there's things that can hurt the flock. We used to have a, pre, a pastor that he said, you can't shear the sheep all the time because they won't be able to protect themselves when winter comes. You can't shear them all the time because there's things that go on in that wool that, that protects their skin. Um, you wouldn't want them to get sunburnt. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Oh my. You know, and uh. Yeah. Oh my. Well, we, um, you know, we as as pastors and preacher, we have to. There's a there's a big duty, <laughs> in in leading the flock and to 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 teach them and to and where to go and, and to take them in the right places. Um. It says uh, they they shall not hunger nor thirst. That, this also, it, it reminds me of that second coming of Christ. He, everything's going to be taken care of. There's going to be a time, goes up here and talks about peace. There's going to be a time of peace where no man will turn. And I got to think about that, that verse, and I saw a picture this week. And I thought it was going to go somewhere else as a little video. But I, I don't think it went there. But what came to my mind, there was, a, there was a cheetah sitting right next to a gazelle. And I thought they were going they they were taking a video because it was showing you know, the the lion sitting next to the lamb and and there's and, there, and the child in in the with the adder and the, with the asp and but the the cheetah was just toying with that that gazelle but it was it was still a peaceful image that I had in my head that 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 cheetah would sit there and not try to 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 eat that gazelle and uh, one day. One day it'll be that way because the, the word says it'll be that way. 
It says, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. We, um, we're in that. His, his word's been brought to the Gentiles. The, the people, the, his people turned him away, crucified him, and he turned it to the Gentiles. Last night we were reading over in Paul. He said, I think it was last night, he says, why kick thou against the pricks? Why do you keep trying to go the hard way? Why, do you, why are you, you doing this? And I didn't, I always took that as thinking about briars. But it was actually a prod that, and I guess that cow will get stubborner than an ox. And it's called ox goad. And they would, they would poke that, that ox to get it in the feet or something to get it to go the right way or in the legs. And why I still I look back now as a Christian and that I remember being convicted. I remember the Lord dealing with me and I kept trying to go the wrong way. I kept trying to do it my way and, and, and going against the pricks. Why do, I, why do I keep going the hard way when it's so much easier just to go the straight and narrow path? But I'm so thankful we got... Now that as a Christian we have the Holy Spirit to guide us to, to, to go the straight and narrow way, to, to take us on that path that's the, it's so much easier to go straight. AJ, uh, he runs cross country, and I used to run. We always had to run these crooked paths up in the woods and through, the, through all the forest, and it was up and down hills. And it was a joy when track season came because it was flat ground in a straight line. I mean, we had to go in a circle, but it was still, I had my lane that I could stay in and nobody else could cross it. Nobody could get in my way and it was just running a straight, just a straight line. But why, oh, why, why do we, <laughs> do we try to keep going our own, our own direction instead of just staying right there in the boundaries that the Lord has set for us? He does. They're good and wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we, before we're saved, just keep kicking. We do. <laughs> you know. No, we, 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 we can't understand his riches and his mercies. Um, we keep trying to do it our own way, but we don't understand it. But he's got a, a luscious green pasture on the top of the hill right there, like he, like he said here in his word. The, but I also noticed some, on the way to Mount Sterling, right there around Bath County, uh, before you get to the Montgomery County line, there's one of the there's a pretty house up there on a hill, and there's all these green pastures around it. And a certain time of the year, you'll see these zigzag paths that go up and down that hill. And I guess the cows they'll go a long way and then they'll come back around. They don't take the straight path up the hill. <laughs> And I, I've yet to understand why they don't just take the straight path. But easier walking. No, I guess not. Yeah, I guess it makes it. Yeah, like it makes it let more level. You know we, um, but God's good to us, and but the whole. If we're not here, this is a light. A light for the Gentiles is the title of this lesson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we can all identify with, with being there before we got saved. There, there's that conviction that comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you know, we've, um, I was talking to someone the other day, and uh, I know uh, a guy, he, um, I have no doubt that, that the Lord has spoke to him at some point. But about a year and a half or so ago, he, he got under conviction, and he started, as a lost person, he started bringing up a lot of, a lot of questions. And uh, he had to make a choice. Follow the Lord or follow the world. And since that day, he has gotten, his mouth has gotten worse. <laughs> he, he, he had a respect and, and understanding that, you know, even though he, he talked that way, he didn't around Christians. But now, it doesn't matter. Every other word, bad words. And... Um, there was, a, there was a choice that had to be made. And when you get under conviction, you have to make a choice. And um, we still pray for them. <laughs> we still hope for them that they will see that light, that they'll have that desire that, you know, the Lord is long-suffering. You know, he was long-suffering for Paul. <laughs> Paul thought he had everything right. He knew the letter of the law. He knew everything to do. He, thought, he, he truly thought, we were talking about this last night, I have no doubt he truly believed he was doing everything right by the flesh, by the law. But man can't live the law. That's why we had to have an intercessor. That's why we had to have Jesus Christ to come for us, to be that perfect sacrifice, because we, <laughs> we're just humans. We're just flesh and bones. We're just people. But when we have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit, he guides us and shows us the way. He gives us a desire to, to follow Him, to be His, and to be that chosen person, to be that light for the whole world to see. But oh, the world is waiting right there. <laughs> the world's waiting for you to mess up. How many times has that lost person in your life that you're praying, you're hoping for everything to go right in front of them, but how many times do they, they point out that mistake that you had made at one point or another? How many, they don't understand that, you know, we might have made that mistake, but we went right to the Lord and said, hey, Lord, forgive me. Lord, please cover this again. Please cover this so I'm not held accountable for this, this action or this deed or this thing that went wrong. <laughs> because as hard as we can try, we're still just flesh and bones. We're still just people. The, the pastor and the preacher, they, there, there's things that, that we don't get right sometimes. Don't hold us on a pedestal. <laughs> don't hold us way up here because sometimes we might let you down as people. You might hold it to a certain standard that is just unreachable only by Jesus. But we're to be that light. We're to do our very level best to stay under the surrender of the Holy Spirit, to stay that that humbleness that the Lord wants us to be at, to be His people, to be His light, not, <laughs> not a light shining for us, not our glory, but His. No. Now, uh, even says in his word. Amen. You know, uh, I can't remember the exact scripture, but paraphrasing, there's a, there's a couple of verses there. It says, what, shall we just go out and sin be abound? Do whatever we want? It says, God forbid. We're not to be those people. We're, we're changed. We're, we're different than that. You can't be a light and dark at the same time. It doesn't work. Now,
Mm-hmm. No, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and once the blood's applied, you know. You know, there's no doubt. I don't think he took any respect on me that versus anybody else. Says he does. He no respect her persons. You know if you've been saved. You know if you've been bought by the blood. Because there's a surrender and a humbleness that falls upon you. The Holy Spirit, he comes to dwell within and he's there keeping you in check. He's there telling you right from wrong. And he's there to... And it's nothing for our glory. It's all for God. It's all so that the world can see and, and show the world what exactly he's done. Because there's people that know me <laughs> who I was and they know me now. And I hope, I pray that they can see the change that's been made. Because if they aren't seeing the change, then I'm not living the life that God has in store for me. If they can't see that change that's been made, then I'm doing it all wrong. Because it's only by God's grace, it's only by His mercy that, that I'm able to be here today, that I'm able to, to read His Word. <laughs> because I tried reading it before I got saved. It didn't make a, it didn't make a lick of sense to me. It, it did not. And I started reading in Revelation. And I said, oh, I can figure this out on my own. And I would sit up here at this, at this office, and I would sit there and read my Bible on the computer because this one that my grandparents got me, when me and Mandy got married, I was too ashamed, too embarrassed to get it out of the box that it came in. So I would hide up there because I think Brother Lowell Manning or somebody had free Wi-Fi. I don't know who it was, but they had free internet. And I would sit there and, and read the Word on my computer. And um, don't start at Revelations, let me tell you. <laughs> it makes sense to the believer, but I had a real hard time you know, it, it, it was good, but it, it, was, it, it wasn't easy. I say start in John <laughs> if, you, if, you're, uh, if you're lost. Because His mercy endureth forever. His love, without His love, we can't do anything. It's all in vain. We can't go with hatred <laughs> and anger to the world. It has to be in love. Not that our God isn't just. That, that God is not who He says He is. But never once did Jesus go out in anger. It went out in love. His word goes out in love. The correction that He has goes out in love. We're to love the flock. We're to love Jesus. And he, he is He's just wonderful. What He does. The light that He has for us to shine <laughs> is wonderful. It can't be explained. Um, you know, it's like the old lighthouses that sit on. We go now to the beach and stuff, and we get to see these retired lighthouses. There was a work involved back then that they had to keep the flame kindled. They had to keep the fire going to shine off of that lighthouse. Now they just plug in electricity, and it, and it goes. It's still a beacon to let them know where danger's at. But used to, there was a work involved. There, there was a duty and a responsibility, and that's what we have. We have a responsibility as His people to continue to keep that, that flame going, to continue to be that light and that hope for the world that's, that's lost and dying. That They will die a second death if they don't meet Jesus. Yeah. And, that, and that's and that's true. And the the world, I don't know. It used to be the number one selling book in the entire world. It may still be. It it, it sold more copies. I know. Yeah, leave it in a box. And that's what I, that's what I you know. And um, it's got mine and Mandy's both of our names on this Bible, but I've kind of taken it as my own. But uh, but God's good to us and. Uh, we um 
I think I kind of ran off the lesson a little bit, but we uh, there was a, a point in here, and I had read it. Number three on the, it says practical point it says our main purpose is to glorify the Lord. If we do any of this for any other reason, it's all vanity. It's for nothing. It, it doesn't do any good to glorify me. <laughs> it doesn't do any good. Because the, the brighter I shine a light towards me, the more imperfections is going to show up. The more things that is going to show up. I, um, but I, I, That's a whole other thing. I, I better stop. It's been good being here this morning. I didn't know I was going to be teaching this morning, but, but God's good. He's... Uh, He's blessed us, and, and, and I enjoy it. I enjoy being able to bring His Word out and to, and to talk and to preach. And to, He's just blessed us. But um, how, do y'all cha- how do you change services over uh, <laughs> Brother Tim or Tommy? Tommy. I sit back there in that little booth, and you'd think I'd know by now how, how everything goes. But it, we love the Lord, and it's good to see everybody out this morning. And uh, come on up, Brother Tom. We're going to put a uh, offering plate in the back, uh, probably for regular service and for Sunday school service or Sunday school. So 